When it comes to financial advice, you got to trust the source. It's why you listen to this podcast. When I'm looking to upgrade my wallet, I turn to NerdWallet. Their expert team of nerds dives into the details to help you find smarter financial products. Before NerdWallet, I was paying for vacations all wrong. (laughs) I was missing out on miles. I didn't even know I was leaving on the table. Now I've got a new card with more miles and more upgrades. What could future you do with more travel rewards? I don't know, maybe that fancy hotel upgrade that you have always been dreaming about. Wherever you go next, make it happen with a smarter travel credit card. Don't wait to make smart financial decisions. Compare and find smarter credit cards, savings accounts, and more today at nerdwallet.com. NerdWallet finance smarter. As with all cards, credit is subject to lender approval and terms apply. Millions of people have lost weight with personalized plans from Noom, like Evan, who can't stand salads and still lost 50 pounds. Salads generally for most people are the easy button, right? For me, that wasn't an option. I never really was a salad guy. That's just not who I am. But Noom worked for me. Get your personalized plan today at Noom.com. Real Noom user compensated to provide their story. In four weeks, the typical Noom user can expect to lose one to two pounds per week. Individual results may vary. We all have talents. Maybe you're good at writing or you can bake a mean pie. Or maybe you're great at organization or snowboarding is your jam. What if there was a way to use your talents to travel the world and have epic adventures? Millennial Money with Shauna Compton Game. It will expand your brain. Even if we just look at the last five years, the advances with technologies opened so many doors to earning money while living abroad or traveling. And of course, this doesn't work for all of us. Not all of us can go mobile with our careers, but our podcast guest today, Abby, found a way to combine her love of travel with her kick-ass skills in graphic design. So get this. She's been able to trade graphic design for epic travels, places like Switzerland and Bali, while still paying her student loans, living a digital nomad and freelance life. All while, to her delight, seeing alerts like her credit score shooting up 75 points while she's in Australia on another epic adventure. And she says, my hard work really felt worthwhile. So my question for you is, What skills and talents are in your toolbox that you can pull out and travel the world? It's really got me thinking. It's really, really got me thinking. So naturally, I had to talk to Abby and get the down low on how she brought this all to life. This is an episode that I'm excited about. I say that about almost every single travel episode, but I love hearing insights from people. And I know that listeners do as well because I get so many responses to how do they travel? How do they do this? How how can I do this? So I know this is going to be a good episode. And I just wanted to start out. You traveled the world all while trading your talent, your graphic designer for epic stays all around the world. I'd love for you to just tell me a little bit about some of these epic adventures and how you were able to trade your talents to afford to travel to these places. Sure. So the first time I ever did this was in Switzerland, in Zurich, and I was job searching when I was living in L.A., and I was kind of thinking of leaving L.A., but not sure where I was going to go. I had previously been living in New York, but wasn't sure about going back there. And I happened to find a job listing online for an internship for three months in Switzerland doing graphic design. So I just didn't think twice and applied (laughs) immediately. It seemed amazing, kind of too good to be true. And they got back to me and we worked it out and I ended up going there. And exactly as you described, did my traded in graphic design for um, a great stay. They provided lodging and travel and I was working full-time hours. So it was definitely a lot of investment for me as far as time, but it was fantastic. And 
the second time I did this was more recently, um, a friend of mine just opened up a beautiful meditation and yoga retreat center in Bali, Indonesia, and she had reached out to me asking for some graphic design help and said, you know, she was on a budget, she was investing a lot of money into the um, the center, and so I said I would do it for free if she would let me stay there, and so that was just an amazing trade. She called it um, Karma Yogi, so I got to go and basically have a yoga meditation retreat in exchange for doing some branding and design work. Yeah. And I think that I followed along your journey on Instagram. And what I loved is you talked about this idea of manifesting, which I know people feel either really strongly they love the word or they look at you kind of half crazy when you say the word manifesting. And it really isn't something I started to do until a couple of years ago. And I was like, There's something actually to this. And I think it's just the idea of putting positive vibes out, positive thoughts out of thinking about this is something I'd like to do. I'd love to travel. I'd love to have opportunities to use my talents to go see the world. And so I'd love for you to just talk a little bit about like how you feel about manifesting or maybe some of the process you go through of, of thinking about these are the things that, that I want in my life. And now I just need to figure out how to get my talents to be able to to get me these places on a fairly limited budget. Sure. Absolutely. So I love the idea and concept of manifesting. It's something that I think I've been doing my whole life, maybe before I even realized it, which is awesome. Um, Just generally positive thinking, but the Bali trip is a, is a good example because I had seen my friend posting about this on social media and just had my eye on it and had the thought out there, sort of put it out into the universe, like, wow, what is she doing in Bali? This looks amazing. I would love to go. And then I got the email from her about graphic design, which was pretty amazing. I hadn't even really talked to her about this at all, but I think there's something to you know, setting your intention or really just having the ambition to do something and maybe even thinking about it. I feel like there's some energy that it it just, you can put something out into the universe and really focus on it and maybe bring it to you. Yeah. And I think that's such great advice. And even just being, when you say even just being aware of opportunities uh, and and having sort of that forethought of when she's emailing you asking about graphic design, like, hey, maybe we could do a super cool trade here. I think it's, it's taking some of those action steps rather than just waiting for things to come to you, but asking the questions and, and you just never know what could happen. Exactly. Definitely. That was my suggestion. And I thought that would be a a pretty fair trade as far as staying there for two weeks. So it was definitely something that I put some work into. Yes. And I know that you, so you stay there for two weeks and then you did this kind of like epic around the world tour for, for six weeks. You went to Australia, you went to Hawaii, obviously you went to Bali and, and then eventually came back around to New York. I, I'd love for you to talk about a little bit, you know, how did you figure out other than the Bali amazing experience where you were going to splurge, where you were going to save money? Did you have any strategy for, for figuring that piece out? Sure. So I have a good friend in Australia who told me that I could stay with him. He was like, you're going to be in Bali. You're going to be so close. You may as well just come visit. (laughs) And I had never been to Australia. So I loved that idea. He lives in Brisbane and basically told me I could stay however long I wanted. So I definitely wanted to utilize that. And like, I thought it was so generous. Of, for a friend to offer for me to stay for free. Normally, I think he Airbnbs out his place. So um, he was essentially not doing that to host me, which is really, really kind. And so that was definitely a money saver, staying with friends. And then I did do some Airbnb. That was where I splurged a bit in Australia. However, I still kept it low. Um, I think... I think my most expensive Airbnb was $50 a night. So I still kept it pretty low. Um, 
Australia, I think the food and drinks were the most expensive part of that trip. I kept flights and trains pretty low. I took a train from Melbourne to Sydney, which was very long. It was an overnight train, so essentially I saved one night of lodging if I was on the train instead. So I kind of hit two birds with one stone there. Um, and I was in, so Hawaii was originally just going to be a layover from Australia. Uh, and then I realized that my date synced up with Wanderlust Festival, which I used to work for. And so I got in touch with my friends that were going to be there and was able to work out a ticket to attend part of the festival and I paid for Airbnbs there. And at that point, I was lower on money than I was, like, <laughs> too thin. So I just booked, like, super shared kind of hostel-style Airbnbs. And it was really fun. I ended up meeting a lot of new friends. I was sharing a room with a couple people, bunk-style. So it was really fun. And I attended the festival, and I rented a car. So that was sort of my trade-off was, you know, doing hostel-style Airbnbs so that I could afford the rental car. But what amazing experience, right? I mean, to be able to be gone that long and and have the trip just sort of evolve and, like, all these magical elements come together for you, all while being able to work remotely, I think that's just, like, such a cool experience that I think everybody should try to have. Thank you so much. Yes, it was absolutely amazing. I was away for six weeks total, so a chunk of time, and it was it was fabulous. I'll do it all over again. <laughs> what do you think are some of the, the biggest lessons that, that you've learned traveling that money couldn't buy, like some of the biggest takeaways that you've learned either about yourself or about seeing other places? Hmm, that's a good question. I think... There's a lot to be said about leaving some things unplanned because um, I think it just you just end up having the, some of the best adventures unexpectedly. So that's a big one for me. I, you know, it can be a little bit stressful not planning certain things. Like sometimes I was booking an Airbnb for the next night or even that night. One day I did that. That was a little bit stressful. So I would say <laughs> plan plan some basics, but it's okay to leave a few elements unplanned and just go with your gut and go with your, you know, what do you feel like doing that day? Or maybe, you know, you want to switch your itinerary around. You can end up having some unexpected fun adventures and meet new friends. Yeah, even just being open to having different experiences and particularly being being a female traveling by yourself, did you ever feel unsafe gone this long or were you just completely comfortable in all the different surroundings you were in? No, I really didn't. Indonesia is really, really safe. Um, I was with friends and then I was also on my own. So it was really nice to come there and sort of get the lay of the land with some friends and then go out on my own, but definitely felt very safe, very confident. The locals in Indonesia especially are super friendly, Australia as well. And in Hawaii as well. So I no no moments of feeling unsafe traveling as a woman. Thank goodness. Yeah, that's amazing. I, I love hearing that. And uh, I ask only because I've had some friends, both female and male, who have had some interesting experiences traveling places and, um, you know, just had some of those kind of uneasy moments. But I think that that's, I mean, obviously, nobody wants to be in danger. And I'm, I'm not saying that. But I think putting yourself out in in places where maybe you're outside of your comfort zone is such a great place for you to just grow as a person and remember that you're super confident and that you can take care of yourself anywhere, don't you think? Yes, absolutely. I wholeheartedly agree there. Well, I love this idea of of trading talent for traveling or or whatever it may be. I mean, I've certainly bartered or trading, whatever word you want to use so often in my career when somebody else has a service that they do. And I'm obviously can help them with their finances. It's just been, it's opened so many different opportunities for me personally. I'd love to know just like based off your own experience, how you think maybe other people might be able to 
manifest or use their talents to be able to to travel while still paying off student loans, debts, things like that? Do you have any tips or ideas for them? Sure. I think it's definitely a good idea to put it out there and make the suggestion. If there's something that you want to do, reach out to that person or that company and just ask. You never know if you don't try. Yeah, that's great advice. And it's certainly asking the question, I mean, what's the worst they can say? No. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And then just making sure that you're set up to do so. I mean, I've been doing graphic design for 12 years now, and I have plenty of experience. I've done a lot of freelancing alongside full-time jobs. And at this point, I've been freelancing fully, fully full-time for about a year almost, which is really amazing. And um, I just knew that I was able to work remotely, that I was going to be able to make that work and set up some projects and you know, there's also time management involved. You have to make sure to dedicate <laughs> enough time to working and, you know, still allow yourself some time to have fun, but it wasn't a fully, fully a vacation. Listen, if you've been using Mint to manage your money, I have got some news for you. First, the bad news. As you might know, Mint is shutting down for good. But the good news, well, there is a way better alternative that is a personal favorite of mine, Monarch Money. And I'm not the only lover of Monarch Money. Many Mint users are turning to Monarch Money and just raving about it. I used to manage my money with an Excel spreadsheet. I know, so archaic. And it was so time consuming. I tried all of the apps, but I just didn't find one I liked until I found Monarch. And I've got to tell you a secret. Monarch is so easy to use with a very intuitive design. You can even collaborate with your partner and you can customize Monarch for whatever your needs are. Monarch is the top rated all-in-one personal finance app. It gives you a comprehensive view of all your accounts, investments, transactions, and more. Create custom budgets, set goals, and collaborate with your partner. And now get an extended 30-day free trial when you go to monarchmoney.com etm. Let's go back to the collaboration bit. Because we know money is a leading cause of divorce and breakups, Monarch has built in collaboration features so you can invite your partner at no extra cost. You can see all your finances, make a budget together, get insights on your cash. Yes, cue the confetti. There will literally not be any more arguments over money. And if you've been frustrated with personal finance apps that are cluttered with ads, difficult to use, or rarely updated, so was Monarch. They built a new kind of personal finance app that's intuitive and powerful ad-free, and constantly improving based on customer feedback. Monarch has a tool that allows you as well to easily import your data from Mint. You can keep all of your tags and all of your categories. After trying Monarch for myself, I understand why it's the top-rated personal finance app. And right now, get an extended 30-day free trial when you go to monarchmoney.com slash etm. That's M-O-N-A-R-C-H-M-O-N-E-Y dot com slash etm for your extended 30-day free trial. So we've got a great Ask Shauna from Mike, and Mike says, thanks for taking some time out to read my question. So my wife and I were recently robbed, which sucks. They took a lot of stuff, but luckily nothing that we couldn't replace easily. We both listened to your show and are thinking that we need to put together a vault of some sort to keep all of our important money documents and such, but we aren't sure where we should put it, what we need to keep in it, et cetera, et cetera. Any ideas? We really want to be proactive since we were so scared that some of our money documents were gone. Thanks so much for the podcast. We're trained commuters, so we're always listening Tuesdays and Fridays and then talking about the episodes. You made it easy for us to have conversations around money without having any judgment. So three cheers for that. Well, thanks, Mike, so much for sending in the question. I'm so, so sorry to hear that you were robbed. I was robbed myself when I lived in a house and... I know how I can't even describe what it feels like. The weirdest sensation when my house was robbed, the robbers were really, really uh, smart. They closed the garage door. They closed all the doors. So when I walked in, I didn't have any idea that something was wrong until I walked through the house and then there were just some weird clues like, some jar lids were off and there was some money that was like in one of those, you know, coin bins that you collect all the coins that was all gone. And there were a few other things just missing and vanished, not to mention my car that was actually in the garage was vanished. So it's a completely eerie feeling. And 
I think I slept with every single light on in the house for it had to have been a couple of months because it's just it's a completely unnerving feeling. So I know totally what you're going through. I know what it feels like. And just if I can give you any words of wisdom, it does get better. It does get easier. But I think it does make you more proactive just to make sure that things are secure. We put in an alarm system and all sorts of things. Not that that is necessarily a given deterrent, but it made me feel better. (laughs) So I think your idea about getting a money vault or a money folder together is just such a great idea. So you can make sure that you know that you have these important documents in one place. And I think especially when you're in a relationship with someone, knowing that there is one place that you have these documents could be really important because if there's a fire or yes, there's a break in or we have earthquakes here in Los Angeles or hurricanes or tornadoes or whatever happens in your area, just to both know where all your documents are kept is super, super important. So Generally, the best place is to store all of this in a safe deposit box at your bank. But not a lot of us have safe deposit box. I actually think they're a really good investment. Sometimes you've got to go to a different branch than the branch that you bank with. But if that doesn't work for you, I always say maybe a fireproof safe hidden away deep, deep, deep in a closet or in your attic buried in a place that only the both of you know where this is. And so in this vault or this folder or this safe, what you're looking to do is to keep originals or copies of really important paperwork. So these are just a few things that come to mind. But again, this may be different for you. So you really need to sit down and just take a take an afternoon, have a beverage, and put on some good music, and then start thinking about these things, and it'll really jog your memory. But we create a blueprint of our financial life. So it's a document that says everything, what we have, what accounts we have, the account numbers, passwords, logins. It's a master guide. And I know that that makes people a little nervous to have that in your fireproof safe or in your vault. But the reason we do that is because what if our computers were stolen and that stuff's on our computers? Or what if one of us needs to get in there and we don't know the password? Or maybe we forgot to tell the other person about something. So we try to keep it update every six months. So that's what we do. If that feels a little nerve wracking for you, don't worry about that. But also you're looking to keep originals of things like life insurance policies, homeowners or renters policies, marriage certificate, birth certificates, uh, divorce certificates, anything like that. Passports, your original passports, um, copies of investment statements. So 401ks, IRA, Roth, anything like that, outside investments that you may have, any loan paperwork like a mortgage deed or car titles copies of your driver's license, social security card, any important documentation that you have that if there was that, oh my God, moment and that vanished, you would be able to pull out a replica of that. So wills, trusts. Uh, We also keep a copy on a uh, drive of a walk around that we did of our place for insurance. So we took our phones uh, or camera, whatever works for you, and just walk around your house room to room to room. Make sure that you get on video all of the things that are of value. So computers, collections of things, maybe you have this awesome record collection, whatever it is for you, make sure that you keep a video copy of it and then keep that on a drive or something in this vault. So if you are robbed or if there is a fire or there is a natural disaster, you can pull that out and you're like, I have an exact video copy of everything that was in my place. So again, you got to keep that a little updated if you buy new things, but that's a super good idea to have as well. So Again, Mike, this is going to differ from person to person. So just sit down with your partner and take an inventory and think of those things. It doesn't have to be all at once. You might, a few months might go by and you're like, oh my God, I forgot to put this in the vault. Totally cool. Just keep it as an ongoing price process. And again, I'm so sorry that you were robbed. I, it really sucks. There's no better word to describe it. But I think you're thinking right about getting things all in order. Yeah. 
I'd love to talk a little bit about being a freelancer. You said you've been on this journey for for about a year now. What has the the money journey been like for you as a freelancer? Are there rough patches or things that you've learned around along the way or things that maybe you would do different if, if somebody was in your shoes and they were making that leap? Sure. Of course, there have been rough patches. Of course, of course. Um, it's been really amazing. I think it's been really empowering, which is something that I didn't really think about or realize before, but I'm running my own business. And um, I think there's this quote that I recently heard in an audiobook that I was reading that says, money is just spiritual energy and motion, wow. which I love because it resonated so much with me and it just, it, it's so true. You really get in what you put in the effort, to, you know, you, you get what you put in. And I love that. I think it's, I've put in a lot of work hustling. I'm kind of constantly looking for new clients and working on new, getting new projects lined up while working on design work. So it's, Definitely, you know, if, if you're not somebody that doesn't enjoy or or rather somebody that doesn't, that really hates job searching, <laughs> then it may be a struggle. It may be tricky because it's constantly, I'm, I'm constantly lining up the next thing. But it's been good. The money journey, to go back to your question, is, is inconsistent. I've had to definitely um, get used to inconsistent income. And that's been interesting. <laughs> it's been a little bit tricky at times, but it's been good. There were some jobs that I had when I first started out that were on site working in an office, kind of full time hours for a few weeks at a time. So those were great and those were a lot easier to deal with as far as the money scenario. Uh, and then, so that sort of established some of my my savings. I like chucked some of that money away and then, you know, was able to have sort of a fund just in case I didn't have any work lined up or something. You know, I hit a rough patch. Yeah. How do you deal with the stress when you're in those inconsistent uh, times? Because I know I've been in them so many times myself. Do you have any <laughs> things that you do or that you go to to just release like anxiety and stress and, and put yourself in, in a better frame of mind? Yes, definitely. So I'll put in the effort that I need to do and make sure that I'm devoting enough time to making those connections, looking for work. And then I make sure to walk away, you know, sleep on it, do some yoga, do some meditation. I'm very into mindfulness for stress relief. That is huge. So and just making sure to get enough exercise and enough sleep and eat well, it sort of just all rolls into, you know, having a balanced life. Yeah, I totally agree. And even just thinking about mindfulness, I'd, I'd love to maybe extract that a little bit further. I, I kind of think mindfulness is the key to all of this, to you being able to travel while still working and, and trade your skills and things like that. And then also being able to just deal with the stress of, of being self-employed and being an entrepreneur. So, when you talk about mindfulness, what does that look like for you? Do you have mantras that you say or uh, like, w what does that look like for you? That's a great question. So for me, it just, it just means taking even a small chunk of time to just sit still and just breathe with my eyes closed um, and very into essential oils. It's like, I feel like they really help me relax and just, carving out that little bit of time every day, um, whether it's, you know, in the morning or evening, having a little routine that chills you out. Life can be so fast paced. And so I think, uh, I don't really have specific mantras, but I do a lot of journaling and a lot of just kind of stream of consciousness, what's going on, especially when traveling, it's really fun to, to do that. So I'm remembering all the little details, but that I found is a, is, has been kind of a meditative practice. I've done that since I was a little girl. So I've always written and um, it's very therapeutic to write things out. So when I'm stressed and I, I need to make a decision that's difficult, I just write it out. And I've, I've found that 
the truth really comes out when I do that because I'm just writing for myself. Like I know, hopefully no one's ever going to read it unless, <laughs> you know, I decide to put it out there or something, but it's just for me. And so I find that it's easy for me to sort my thoughts in that way. Yeah, you know, I've been like an on and off journaler throughout my life. And I think it's because I spend so much of my day writing stuff, whether it's podcast episodes or articles or other things. I feel like I'm I'm always writing. So the act of journaling for me felt like such a heavy task until a couple years ago when I was really struggling with anxiety and depression. And my therapist is like, you should go back to this. Like, don't judge yourself. Just even if you misspell things or who cares? just bang it out. And I found like, that's so therapeutic in those moments where either you're you're about to do something big and you're nervous or things are maybe going a little kooky, or even when there's good times, just being able to write something out, it really does free up your mind in, in like such a powerful way. Yeah, it's amazing. And this is something that I've been doing since I was little. Like, I don't know who suggested it to me, but I'm so grateful for them. And you know, it wasn't even something that I realized up until a few years ago, probably, that this is sort of a form of therapy and it's meditative. Like sometimes I'll just bust out 10 pages and not even realize wow. the amount that I've written. <laughs> that's impressive. I can't say I do 10 pages, but that's impressive. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> So, so where's the next adventure for you? Where are you, where are you manifesting to take your talents next? So I'm relocating in two weeks um, and I'm going from New York City to Austin, Texas. So I'm really excited about that move. There's a lot of great art and music happening there. I love live music. So I'm excited to keep my freelance game in Austin and pay a little less for rent, hopefully, than New York and have some more access to nature in my everyday life, but still in a city. And then, of course, I'm going to keep traveling. I'm not sure where my next huge adventure is going to be. So it's a mystery. I love that. That's great. So where would you say is like the favorite place that you've ever been to? Do you have like a, f a favorite list? That's a good question. So it's a tie. I really, 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 really loved Bali so much, but I also really loved Australia. So many different places in Australia. Um, I, I didn't really have much of an interest in exploring Brisbane, but my friend lived there and I ended up loving Brisbane so much. It's such a charming city. It has so much to offer. Um, everyone's adorable accents don't hurt at all. <laughs> and then I really love... Uh, Byron Bay, Australia, which is just about a two-hour drive south of Brisbane. It's a beautiful beach town. It's just so much fun. A lot of yoga mindfulness happening there and just stunning beaches. So Bali and Brisbane and Byron Bay. I guess I like places that start with a B. <laughs> <laughs> I'm noticing a theme. That's awesome. <laughs> I love it. So what tips would you want someone listening to think about in terms of, of using their talents as a way to to afford or pay for epic trips? Is there any like one or two tips that, that you could leave listeners with? Sure. I think it's all about balance, you know, utilizing your connections as well. So if you have a friend that lives in a cool location that says, oh, anytime you want to come visit, Take them up on that. Take them up on that. I, if somebody tells me that, I will take them seriously because um, that is an, a great way to explore a place and visit a friend and not pay for a hotel. Um, but also just balance, you know, continuing to work hard and put in the time that you're devoting to your craft and do your research and, you know, develop your skills. Um, and like I said, balance, you know, take care of yourself, take care of your finances, make sure that you're putting some money aside. You know, if you want to save up for something, it definitely takes effort. I love that. What great tips. I love leading. I love leaving the episode on balance. So Abby, this has been awesome. Tell listeners of where they can go to find you. You can go to my website at abbeylay.com. It's A-B-B-E-Y-L-E-Y. -E and that is my graphic design portfolio and has links to all my social media if anybody wants to get in touch or 
if you're curious about what I'm, what kind of design work I do, feel free to check it out. Feel free to get in touch and ask me questions about travel or anything. Love making new friends, like I said. Hey, thank you so much for listening to today's episode. Remember to subscribe to the podcast. It's absolutely free, and you'll make sure you never miss an episode of Millennial Money. You can also listen to all our episodes on Spotify, Google Play, iTunes, Stitcher, and Pandora. We've all spent more time with family lately. It can feel like old times, but your mind is on the future too and what you can do to shape it. At Sandy Spring Bank, we work with clients to help them grow and protect their money with wealth management, trust services, and insurance so they can enjoy today and ultimately pass along their wealth. We believe real banking is a conversation. Let's talk about your dreams. Visit sandyspringbank.com slash wealth. Wealth and insurance products are not FDIC insured, not guaranteed, and may lose value. Hello, Saver. Whether you're saving for that trip to the tropics or saving for an emergency, now is the time to take advantage of Wells Fargo's savings options. Wells Fargo offers savings accounts that can help you save towards your goals. So, what are you saving for? Visit a Wells Fargo branch or wellsfargo.com slash save to open a savings account today. Wells Fargo Bank N.A. Member FDIC. 